Good afternoon and aloha and welcome. I'm Ron Mizutani, President and CEO of PBS Hawaii. We thank you for joining us uh, for this uh, exclusive virtual event this afternoon, featuring a sneak peek and preview of BBC Studios, uh, the Green Planet series, episode five, Human Worlds. And uh, Maui took center stage and very, very happy and proud to be a part of today's program. Final episode uh, airs, by the way, on Wednesday, August 3rd. Uh, on PBS Hawaii at 8 p.m. Tell your friends, and we'll remind you at the end of this uh, virtual discussion. All, also available on demand at pbshawaii.org. Now on the screen, you're gonna see a QR code. If you enjoy the screening, please consider giving a, a gift to PBS Hawaii as uh, we support your support allows us to do more of these programs virtually and also just the content that we develop for you. We mahalo you for your consideration. All right, joining us on the panel this afternoon is uh, Council Member Shane Sincensi. Uh, thank you, Council Member, for joining Joining us, it is a pleasure to have you here, sir. Adam Knox, Maui Invasive Species Committee Operations Manager. Adam, thanks for joining us. Uh, Asia Akuna on the front line, all the way in Hana. Hana uh, Maikonia, crew leader, also from the Maui Invasive Species Committee. And Hank Oppenheimer. Hank, you look a little different with that beard, uh, your COVID beard, no longer there. Uh, Maui Nui Coordinator for the Plant Extinction Prevention Program. Thank you, Hank, for your good work. Uh, we want to appreciate all of you who have already sent your questions in. We're going to try to get to as many as possible. Uh, before, I'd like to lead off with Taya, though. Taya Penniman uh, is the Invasive Species Committee's Acting Manager, Auto Maui. Uh, provide us a brief summary, if you will, or overview, introduction, Taya, of, of this Myconia plant that uh, it continues to wreak havoc in, in many parts of Hawaii, especially Maui. Sure, thanks, Ron. And as folks saw in the video, Myconia poses a huge threat to our native forests and watersheds. In addition to its giant leaves that shade out our native species, a single plant can produce millions of tiny seeds each year that can live in the soil for up to 20 years. Myconia is also super shallow rooted, quickly taking root in disturbed areas, which can actually lead to landslides. So just a bit of history, shortly after it was discovered in our Maui forest, a full-time Myconia team was created to find and remove these plants. An informal partnership of state, federal, county, local agencies sprang up that eventually morphed into the Maui Invasive Species Committee with an expanded mandate to work on other invasive plants and animals, but Myconia remains one of our highest priority species for working on. You'll hear from our panelists about some of the techniques and strategies that we've developed over the years, why protecting native species and places is so important and why we remain hopeful. We would have lost this battle long ago without the strong support of our partners, including University of Hawaii, National Park Service, County of Maui and the state of Hawaii. Also critical to our success are community members who allow us to, to work where they live and most especially, we're so grateful for the work of those who are in the forest five days a week, showing what Hawaiians call aloha aina, love for and care of the land. Yeah, thank you very much for that overview. It helps a lot. Some folks don't even know that Maikoni exists in Hawaii, but uh, it's been here for quite a while. Council member, if you don't mind, you've been a strong advocate of, of this effort in East Maui, uh, and you've seen the Maikoni scale infestation uh, from the air and, and certainly on the ground, the hard work that the team is doing. Why do you see this as a priority? Why does the county see it as a priority? Hey, mahalo, Ron, for that question. And yes, legislatures, uh, we recognize the importance of the East Maui watershed to our very survival. Uh, and we look to protect uh, over 100 acres of native forests, including over 400 miles of freshwater streams. Uh, just the sheer amount of surface water that's generated from this watershed is one of the largest suppliers of water and provides billions of gallons of water for do domestic use and for agriculture use to the central plains of Maui. And so this invasive Myconia plant, if left unchecked, uh, can easily deprive the watershed of water, especially when it sucks it up for itself. And our watersheds are water banks that our future generations will rely upon for their survival. And with impending climate change projections and uh, resulting droughts, it is critical uh, that we rid this invasive plant now from our native forests. So uh, we just cannot deplete our water resources that are currently found in our streams and in our aquifers. 
Thank you, Council Member. I want to jump to Asia because you, Asia, are in HANA this, this afternoon and on the front line every day. Uh, what was it like to see uh, a, a piece of your world being shared with the rest of the world? Hello, Haran. Uh, it was exciting, a little bit nerve wracking, kind of scary, like, ah, don't want to be in the light. But, um, you know, uh, really hopeful that we can shine more light and bring more people into, you know, conservation and preservation. So it's really awesome, awesome experience. I bet it was. Uh, Adam, if you don't mind, I'll jump to you as well. Uh, no other island. I mean, every island has this. Hawaii Island certainly does. But East Maui, especially, Maui especially, such a large area. Now, based on your experience, uh, what do you see as uh, some of the biggest challenges? Um, and what makes you have that hope in being successful? Thanks, Ryan. Um, so uh, I guess you could say we're locked in a botanical arms race against this plant species uh, across thousands of acres. And uh, it's working against us. 24-7, 365. Um, so we have to be really clever and persistent um, about how we do this work. Um, ben Franklin's adage of, you know, the ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure definitely applies here in that the more time we can buy ourselves um, through prevention of further spread, the better chances we have at preserving the ecosystem that is intact. And I'd say I'm, I'm really hopeful um, because in the 30 years or so that Maui conservationists have um, embarked on this mission to fight the spread of Myconia, we've managed to keep it from spreading island-wide on Maui. Um, and in that time, new technologies and methodologies have been able to be uh, developed to improve access to these plants, uh, especially in hard to reach areas. Um, you know, we've spent years pioneering ways to do this work through research and development. Um, and the ballistic herbicide delivery method is just you know, one example of that you know, that's featured in the, um, the Green Planet episode here. Um, you know, we're excited about new things coming into the pipeline. Uh, for example, we have uh, a collaboration with UH Hilo where we're going to look at machine learning to take um, lots of high resolution aerial images um, and run those through a computer to detect myconia. Um, so that helps us refine, you know, how we do the work. Um, we're also really excited about the gregarious caterpillar being released into the infestation since that little caterpillar can eat the myconia all the time, um, you know, whereas we can't. So we're really excited, really hopeful. There's lots of um, things out there um, in the future, you know, there's no telling what it'll hold for us to discover. Yeah, thank you for saying that, Adam, because there's, a, you know, sometimes television, you can only take so much of a story and, and share it. And, and, and frankly, visually, that was fun to look at. It was, it was amazing to watch this herbicide effort or, or it, going on, but there's way more happening than just that from the sky. And I want to make sure we clarify that. And I'll get back to you in a bit. But Hank, you've been doing, speaking of 30 years, you've been doing this great work for decades. Why, does, why do you have hope, Hank? And, and when you look at one plant, because you know all the plants in Maui, but one plant can really make a difference. And in this case, it can be devastating. Well, yeah, thanks, Ron. You know, like I say in the episode, you know, all plants are important and they're part of ecosystems and plant communities that sustain us. You know, there are, you know, our watersheds and they're important, not just for that, but biologically, botanically, culturally, as well as economically and for our livelihood. So it would be foolish, I think, to let uh, any plant species go extinct. But what gives me hope is just seeing the amount of uh, growth in the conservation community over the decades. There's lots of job opportunities now. There's lots of different projects. There's more protected areas. So it's really hopeful the, you know, the, uh, the trajectory is, you know, optimistic. I think. I mean, you got to be half, you, your cup has to be half full, even though this thing from the air can be daunting. Uh, yeah. We have a question from Sierra and Adam, I think this one may be best for you. Uh, Sierra says, and I, a lot of folks have thought this already, I'm concerned about the herbicides and pesticides being used in the forest. What are the alternatives? This seems to be a dangerous for the ecosystem. Your answer to that. Yeah, no, I know I can fully appreciate the concern and obviously None of us want to, uh, we all want to minimize our use of, you know, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, but, um, you know, for a large scale management, um, 
for in some invasive species, especially ones that are very difficult to reach areas, um, we sometimes have to resort to chemical methods. Um, and we're using very small amounts. These are very targeted small amounts. Um, it's probably hard to tell, but in the, in the episode, the paintballs that are coming out are about the size of your thumbnail. They're very small. Um, so we're, we're very precise and, um, you know, try to minimize um, our chemical control. And on the flip side, you know, we are able to do a lot of manual control as you'll see Asia and the crew and the, the episode are out, you know, every day, day in and day out pulling plants and that's what it takes. Um, so we do the best that we can with the tools that we have and um, have the best outcome. Thank you, Adam. Asia, about that. I mean, that, that seems like it's pretty labor intense, uh, but to, <laughs> to pull each myconia plant, what are you thinking each time you pull? Uh, it's a good feeling. You get that uh, feeling of satisfaction, you know, because you know this plant's not going to grow anymore. And when we're all working together, you know, on big areas where we're all pulling plants and they're all hung up in the trees and it's just like Christmas and that's kind of a, a good feeling. Just yeah, that that's how much you got in one day. That, you know, if we had way more people, we could just do more, way more. Well, speaking of that, Alicia is asking, I'm not sure who can answer this question, for residents of Maui, is there a way they can help volunteer uh, mindful practices that they can do when they're out in the nature, in nature rather, who can answer that question best? Volunteer. I can take a stab at it. There are, yes, volunteer, thanks, there are volunteer opportunities with say, uh, Maui Nui Botanical Garden or Halakawa National Park. Um, Native Hawaiian Plant Society, but everybody ha can do something individual like cleaning your boots uh, before and after you go hiking so you're not dragging seeds or other pathogens from one place or another. So something really basic and simple, but it's really, really effective. It's, it's the small things that we can all do when, we, when we're up in the, in the mountains. Adam, it, it's good to hear that people are willing to go out there and, and help. Uh, do you suggest, we're not suggesting anybody go rogue and start pulling plants, but what is, what is the best way that you think folks can help? Well, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm glad there's a lot of interest from the viewers. And I think the first step really is just to get um, informed and educated. And, um, you know, I think going to the um, MauiISC.org web, website is a great place to start um, to understand our species that we work on and then other invasive species issues. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get involved. And I would say just in the short, that would be a good place to start, um, whether it's career opportunities or uh, potential volunteer opportunities or educational opportunities mm -hmm. through schooling, because um, we do visit schools as well. Um, I, would, I would direct viewers there for a start. Good. Council member, you, you were up in the sky. You've been out there uh, firsthand. You've boots on the ground, literally. What, what, what are you seeing out there that, that kind of left the image and, and left really a feeling inside your know in, in, in who you are. Mahalo, Ron, for that question. And you're right. That was uh, uh, definitely an experience to remember. I was able to participate in one of the recent aerial ballistic operations in East Maui. And so I did see how specific concentrations of the invasive myconia were inaccessible to the ground crews especially in the thick how forests of Nahiku and along the, the steep cliffs of Hanavi Valley. So, um, you know, the ballistic was, what I saw was the only way to really target some of these. And a lot of these myconia were, were starting to go beyond that level where uh, it's starting to really reach the, the native forests at, at certain elevations. So um, I just wanted to, thank all of the, the crews that are out there. Um, we were able, the, the council was able to increase the annual budget to include you know, additional uh, hours of aerial operations just to, uh, to mitigate this, uh, these efforts. Yeah, I can imagine just getting to some of those areas took a tremendous amount of effort before uh, this type of option or tool came about. Uh, Hank, you know, uh, someone who's asking, are there, M. Wolf is asking, are there other invasive species besides myconia affecting our native species? Oh yeah, there's unfortunately quite a bit. You know, there's uh, raspberries and blackberries, uh, 
things that have been brought in uh, to make our lives better, but have escaped. There's other ornamentals, uh, African tulip trees, which everybody in Hana is really familiar with, uh, lots of other fruit trees, uh, various uh, inadvertent hitchhikers that have come with nursery stock. So there's a long, long list of uh, invasive plant species in Hawaii, probably more than any other place on the planet. Including our albizias, uh, which uh, a lot of a lot of folks are asking about albizias and and its effect, uh, their effect. They they grow like weeds, uh, but they're very dangerous because they're very thin. Uh, Asia, I got to ask you because I want to. I'm I'm curious to know what it's like a day in a life of yours. Um, take us take us to the trenches. Take us there. What what is it like? Well, first we just uh, get all our gear. We have dedicated gear, so like uh, Hank said, we don't want to you know chuck seeds onto other places that don't have myconia. So we get our gear, we drive to the site, we just line up, kind of chop through the bushes, try not to get hit in the face while getting eaten by mosquitoes, you know, just looking for, for the myconia. And then out of the bushes, you'll hear like Amy, the other field crew call, hey, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Mahalo for coming in. And then somebody will yell, oh, I got a big patch of myconia. So we all kind of push together, go over there, just pull as many as we can and um, just do our best. When you pull, what do you do with them? Do, are you leaving them there? I mean, I take, I'm kind of visualizing what, what goes on there. Uh, so like in the video, some of the things you can see, we pull it out, we try to shake as much of the dirt and um, like moss off of the roots so that when we do hang it upside down, it doesn't have the moisture since, you know, out here it's so wet, just hanging it with the dirt, it'll just still root and continue growing. So when you we, shake the, does it, the, the seeds get released? I'm part of my uh, ignorance. No. Well, no, the, um, we're not pulling out like the big um, seeded plants. These okay. are just for, like the smaller, maybe um, a little bit overhead high. The the ones with seeds, we, we use the herbicide. Because yeah, okay. we don't want the seeds falling over and, and tracking them out. Good question though. <laughs> Thank you, Asia. I'm kind of selfishly asking questions that I think, about. I'll be honest with you, uh, back in the early 90s, uh, the Department of Ag took young reporters out. It was a much different me, but um, I saw the myconia for the first time, never heard of it. I thought it was a beautiful plant, by the way. It was a beautiful purple plant. Uh, and then we saw how big these enormous canopies can grow. Uh, and and uh, as you can imagine, killing everything below it. So yeah, this has been around for a while. Question, uh, and I'll leave that up to the panel to decide who can answer best. Do you think awareness of nature and present day challenges with climate change can be introduced to early childhood education? Our Keiki love nature and can begin to tell their own stories. Adam, you're shaking your head in affirmation. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and in fact, we already do have a program that's been developed uh, on uh, Maui in concert with partners called Hoike Ohaleakala and that does exactly what um, uh, the, the, the question, uh, the person asking the question um, sort of is getting at. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the goal. And we also have a, um, training courses for tour operators um, and to make sure that they're informed when they're taking you know, tours, whether it's through um, rides on the Hana Highway um, or you know, other types of tour operations, hiking, so they can get the information about native species and invasive species um, and inform guests of the islands. Another question about climate change, and I'm open to anybody who wants to take a stab at this from Elliot asks, how might climate change affect a myconia control efforts? Anybody want to take an answer to that one? Tay, you want to go ahead, yeah. please? Yeah. yeah, I'll take a shot at it. Um, myconia does seem to be somewhat elevationally limited right now. And I would be concerned that with a warming climate, that might change where it could get to. So, you know, higher up in our native forest or higher elevation. So um, I definitely would see that as a possibility. I don't think that's been demonstrated, but, you know, we see that with mosquitoes moving into higher elevation because it's warmer. Um, and so to the extent they are currently, it is currently somewhat limited. I would see that as a potential problem. Council Member, I, I'm going to go off script a little bit here. Why should we care? Um, I mean, invasive species are here to stay. And, and sadly, they affect so many parts of our lives, our economy, our, our agriculture. But at home, why should we care when you watch something like this? Yes, please. 
Uh, yeah, I, I can take that one, Rod. Yes, please. Uh, I mean, I think we can just look at uh, the neighboring Big Island and just to see the uh, devastating effects of invasive species uh, other than Myconia, but just how it's affected the, the livelihood, the lifestyles on, on the Big Island. And for us, you know, we have, uh, we bring in a lot of funding from our real property taxes. So I think if these things will affect uh, our property owners as well as our visitors, I can really affect our economy. Yeah. Adam, would you agree that uh, when you ask, when people ask you, why do you do what you do? Why should we at home care? Yeah, it's a great, great thing, a great question. I mean, you know, there's definitely, um, you know, an argument to be made, obviously, for uh, preserving biodiversity. But I think, um, and I, I'm sure Hank would agree, um, that the ultimate denominator here, especially in these high islands, is water. Um, being able to capture water effectively in a watershed is tantamount to our survival here on the island. Um, and maintaining a healthy ecosystem with uh, plants that have, uh, you know, a healthy root structure that are not all the same, you know, root structure, the same canopy build where they're shading out everything else is really important to maintain the health of that ecosystem so we can continue to catch fresh water. Hank, same question. Why should we care? Well, I, I agree, you know, with, with Adam uh, about the water. So I, I look at it as, you know, we're on this green planet traveling through space. And I imagine that's like, you know, we're all in this canoe together. And it, it seems foolhardy to me to start dismantling the canoe, you know, just losing piece by piece, because I don't know how far we get, you know, without a hole. You know, so uh, besides all the, you know, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, moral issues uh, surrounding uh, that we're responsible to right the wrongs of the past, even though they weren't done intentionally. It was, but as a society, we've been careless and reckless. And that's why I say we, we have a duty to act and, and we should try to do something to make things right. Asia, yeah. as, as a Kikioka Aina, I know that this makes you emotional inside too. Uh, this effort that you do, that drives you as well. What else drives you? Yeah, just um, being on a small island, you know, we're all connected. Uh, why, why not do something? You know, we know what happens when, when nobody cares. You know, you got to... Um, Make sure the kids uh, understand that and have a place where they can go, you know, to feel that. Sorry. No, I, I appreciate you being transparent. I mean, tell us why you're feeling that emotion right now, Isa. You know, I have kids and I want their kids to be able to um, raise their family in that same uh, environment and not have to struggle, go out but just to have those same upbringings. And for me not to do anything would just, uh, cannot, just cannot. It's part of Kuleana, isn't it? Yeah. Part of responsibility. Uh, more of a comment from someone um, asked saying, M-I-S-C, B-I-S-C, O-I-S-C, K-I-S-C, don't give up. Uh, because you're not alone. There are currently local crews removing Myconia in the Society Islands, the Marquesas, uh, Australia, New Caledonia. I mean, there's a lot of efforts going on, similar efforts, uh, where Myconia populations continue to grow. So this person is saying, keep up the fight, um, knowing that. Uh, I want. I, there was one question. I'm so sorry. How can other islands invasive species committees, because there are other counties that have this, get approved for ballistic control of Myconia? Is that something this panel could answer, Adam? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we actually um, already do. And so, um, yeah, each island mm -hmm. has, uh, you know, is affected my Myconia in different ways in terms of the size and scope of infestations. And there are active um, efforts with HBT, as we call the ballistic technology, with the, um, yeah, the herbicide on um, Oahu and Kauai in particular. Um, 
and with interest also on the Big Island with our partners, um, the other ISCs. So at that act, we already have that um, that collaboration going. And so they're doing it in different ways as well, but not not necessarily from the sky, or is that what they're? Uh... No, just you know they have different they have a different infestations. They're in different mm-hmm. zones, um, but they have the same problem where they have plants that are inaccessible relatively, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on foot. And so they need this tool to be able to access these plants that are in remote areas or very dangerous to walk areas. Um, that's where the helicopter comes in, just like you saw in the episode. Um, so yeah. Okay, I got a science question here. <laughs> Somebody help me here. Uh, in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants and oxygen is released. Wouldn't the increase in the numbers of plants help deal with climate change by absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen, helping cleanse the atmosphere? It's, it, uh, this person clearly knows science, but w- there's opposing views here. Who, who can help me on that? Well, I'll, I'll answer part of that. So okay. it sounds like they're advocating for more myconia because uh, I, plants and they're creating oxygen and uh, absorbing ca- carbon dioxide, but that would be to the de- detriment of every other plant anywhere nearby. So, it, you know, including our endemic Hawaiian plants, which have, which exist nowhere else on earth. They have nowhere else to go. It just, it seems like, uh, you know, that it sounds good, but not really when you think about it a little more. And uh, those uh, monotypic stands of myconia are not really efficient of, in recharging our aquifers. Thank you for answering the question. Anybody want to add to that? Um, you know, because let's be honest, this is not, there, there's always a different point of view. Uh, and we want to stay balanced at PBS Hawaii, but also give opportunities for other voices. But at the same time, add science to to the anecdotal stories as well and, and what is realistic. Asia, you were shaking your head. I was just uh, agreeing. Like, I'm, I'm not too, uh, I don't want to get into it too much. I, it was a good question. <laughs> yeah, good question. Good question. I thought maybe the mosquitoes was getting to you. Yeah, the mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Council member, you, you, may, uh, you wanted to share your thoughts on this one? Yeah, th- thanks, Ron. Yeah. I just wanted to add that the East Maui watershed is home to over 50 endangered plant species. And the watershed provides this critical habitat for over 100 rare and endangered plant species. So, so when we let this invasive non-native plant thrive, it, it just kind of covers and kills everything that, that's native in our rainforest. It's almost like you you uh, wrote this question, or it's a comment, uh, council member. Somebody just said, by replacing native forests, including endemic plant and animal species, but also ancient Polynesian introduced plants, such as wild bananas, breadfruit, myconia, and other invasive species are really eroding our cultural heritage as well, not just the plants. Uh, and Asia, somebody just said, right on Asia, we need people like you. So somebody acknowledging you. Uh, Tia, I saw you raise your hand. Did you want to uh, add to the answer pri- to the previous question? Tia? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think I would just add, um, as Asia mentioned, it's really about connection and Pelina. Um, and our, the plants were the first colonizers in the islands. They came long before the humans were here. They made it possible for humans, for those first, for the Polynesians, the first Hawaiians to land and survive and thrive in the islands. Um, Another point about when we change our ecosystems is we've talked about Myconia being shallow rooted in places like Tahiti, um, because they're shallow rooted, whole sections of the land have slid off. Um, Our native species are good at helping our coral reefs be healthy. When we have that sedimentation, that runoff, it's not good for the coral reefs. So Mm -hmm. even if you're, O- only a water person or a marine person, you want healthy native forests for, for healthy coral reefs. Good. I, I want to get your final thoughts as we wrap this up and um, we'll go around the, the table. Uh, Council member, I know that you have some thoughts about Department of Ag's role as well, especially from the county level. We actually had a question about that, but please hear your first, uh, your final thoughts, Council member. Mahalo, Ron, for the question. And yeah, we had a 
a question about how is this going to uh, affect the new newly formed Department of Agriculture. And uh, to that end, um, uh, water is going to be crucial in the success of the new Department of Agriculture. Uh, we've done it to just to boost our food security here on the island. And so currently, the transport of water from uh, from East Maui watershed is, is within these old sugar cane plantation ditch systems and they leak and they waste water. And so with the impending climate change projections, including currently farmers of country are on a water restriction right now. And so we cannot have farmers to be either killing their crops or, or ranchers not, uh, you know, watering their, uh, uh, all of the, of the animals. So um, I think it's going to be important that we, you know, we invest into our watersheds uh, so that it's healthy and so that it can sustain us. Thank you. Yeah. Water is life. Water is life. Adam, your final thoughts Yo. today. Thanks, Ron. Um, I guess I would just say that I feel really lucky to uh, work with some of the best people on the planet, both in the air, um, as seen in the episode and on the ground. Um, and I just feel really lucky, lucky that we were able to share um, some of our unique experiences with the world in the, the episode and hopefully your and viewers really enjoyed it and that we were able to, I'm, I'm hopeful we were able to demonstrate um, that you know, teamwork and an open mind in particular can definitely lead to extraordinary outcomes. Um, and that, you know, I, I guess you could say we're really only limited by the boundaries of our imaginations. Nice, nicely said. Hank, your final thoughts on work that you've been doing for decades uh, finally yeah. gets, gets some national world attention. Thanks, Ron. Well, um, you know, the, the pet program staff on all the islands. So I want to give a shout out to all the other peppers because they're all doing great work. And I also want to acknowledge all our partners and collaborators, all the landowners, large and small uh, funding agencies. Just there's uh, the beautiful thing about the pet program to me is kind of similar to what Adam said. We get to work with so many different people. And it's, it's really rewarding in that regard as well, besides doing something, you know, good for Maui. And meaningful back to uh, having a purpose, Hank. Thank you for all your great work through the yeah. years. And Teo, before I go to Asia, just your final thoughts. Yeah, thanks. I think I, I would echo what Hank had to say about uh, it really being a collaborative effort. And uh, we stand on the shoulders, for sure, of those who came before, people who recognized this as a problem, called it out, found the, found the partnerships to make it happen. Uh, we didn't develop the herbicide ballistic technology, you know, all, all these other tools, folks that are working to find natural enemies. We learn from each other, from our partners on other islands. And it really is a, a Kako thing. We're, we're working together to make this happen, um, including the, as you saw, the helicopter pilots who, who helped get us to and from as safely as well. So we really are fortunate to, to be doing this work on Maui. No other island has the support of its county the way that Maui does. Are you saying Maui no Ko'oi? Is that what you're I saying? I am saying Maui no Ko'oi, yes. <laughs> well, thank you for the set. I just uh, I just hit it. And Taya, uh, Aja, your last uh, thoughts. And again, thank you for being sharing your transparent feelings of, of your role in Kuleana. But um, all of this, it must be kind of overwhelming. Yeah. I just apologize again. No, for, don't apologize. Emotional, but yeah, just mahalo to everybody. Uh, who came out and, you know, got to spend some time with us to see what we do. And hopefully it'll bring more awareness and people um, into, you know, into the forest and so they can see and feel what our crew feels and sees every day. And mahalo Thanks. to the crew, because that's what makes the job fun and, and we get to enjoy each other's company and that ohana. So mahalo. Thank you, Asia. And again, never apologize for showing your heart. Please, never. All right, this concludes our discussion for today. Thank you guys, what a, what a great panel discussion. We thank you all for spending the afternoon with us. Also, we apologize that we got to most of the questions, but not all of them. And I wanna thank those who did take some time to, to send us questions. Uh, at the end of the discussion, you're gonna have an email 
uh, that will send you some questions for response uh, for the panelists. PBS Hawaii also will be sending an audience survey for you to fill out. Please do so on feedback of today's uh, virtual session. It helps us continue to get better and, and improve on these events. And we really do enjoy screenings such as these. We've done dozens of them through, through COVID and it really allows for a different opportunity for us to reach out and share our, our content. Uh, if you have a moment, please do provide that feedback. And don't forget, this episode, final episode of BBC Studios, The Green Planet series, uh, episode number five, uh, Human Worlds, airs on Wednesday night. That's August 3rd on PBS Hawaii at 8 p.m. And we'll put that information all over our social media platforms as well and available also on uh, pbshawaii.org. Thank you, panelists. Council member, thank you very much again. Asia, thank you for your great work. Uh, Hank and Adam and Tea Mahalanui and uh, those behind the scenes. Uh, thank you for your great work. On behalf of myself and our entire Ohana here at PBS Hawaii, mahalo nui. And until next time, aloha.